Dr. Kama, a PGY2 at Magnolia Internal Medicine. Um, thank you for having me here today. So as you can read here, a case report on catfish-induced bacteremia. What exactly does that mean? So we have this gentleman come in, 60-year-old uh, male, um, presented to the emergency department with acute encephalopathy. He was very uh, obtunded, um, very slurred in his speech. Um, honestly, on presentation, we had no idea what was happening to him. Um, his vital signs were relatively stable, um, tachycardic on presentation, um, but it appears that he was definitely meeting sepsis criteria. Um, as we worked him up, we were concerned about his encephalopathy, trying to exactly figure out and pinpoint exactly what's going on. Our emergency department did a great job stabilizing him. Um, however, he was obtunded. He wasn't able to provide us with a great physical presentation, giving us a history of his background. Um, he was able to uh, manage to tell us that two days prior, he went out on a fishing expedition um, and he got stung by a catfish. Honestly, I did not even know catfish had the capability of stinging people. Um, as you can see in the top right corner, um, those are the, the, the pectoral fins, which have barbs in them. Apparently they can sting people and that's news to me. Um, but, you know, I'm not a angler much myself. <laughs> but anyways, um, that was two days prior. He presented with um, a really swollen right hand. Um, it looks like he also had a pus filled um, abscess on his right upper um, extremity. Um, he said that over the course of two days, it got worse that he decided to come into the emergency departments. Um, later, we found out that he did have a, a slight um, extended medical history. He was known to be an alcoholic, um, and it looks like some of his uh, other indications in his labs did reveal that he had some other causes of a possible encephalopathy. So as our emergency department worked him up, he did a great, they did a great job trying to identify exactly what's going on. They drilled cultures. They started broad spectrum antibiotics. Like I said, on presentation, he was decently stable. Um, they went ahead and completed the workup by doing a head CT. Unfortunately, during that event, um, he arrested. They did do um, a round of CPR and were able to get Ross and they were able to stabilize him to move him to the ICU. Um, when he became onto our service, we looked over his labs and these are the labs that keep me up at night. As internal medicine, um, I'm sorry for geeking out on these labs, but as you can see, he was um, severely neutropenic. His um, absolute neutrophil counts were in the 300s. Um, his white blood cell count 0.8, um, definitely meeting sepsis criteria just alone from that into tachycardia. Um, he was pancytopenic. Um, his glucose were in the, it was 20, confirmed with a point of care glucose as well. Um, he did require a D5, a D10 drip during that time. However, we're now able to um, increase those glucose counts. Um, he had a bandemia of 16. Um, the rest of his labs, he was also um, mildly neutral. Um, his sodium was reduced. Um, he, he had a pneumonia level in the 90s. He had a lot of causes for causing him to have encephalopathy. Um, unfortunately, he coded again and we we're unable to receive ROSC that time. Um, he passed away, unfortunately. Um, a few days later, we got the lab report, and I'd um, like to congratulate our lab technicians, our microbiologists and pathologists able to um, actually um, identify this bacteria that we found in his blood. Um, Edward Celetarda, um, unfamiliar to me and unfamiliar to a lot of people when I ask him about that. Um, it turns out this, um, this family member of Enterobacter family is mostly found in aquatic life, specifically catfish. And it turned out that it was isolated in his bloodstream, likely to cause of his bacteremia. Um, so the main point of actually bringing this up to um, the spotlight here is yes, we did, were able to isolate this bacteria. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it would have been covered with our broad spectrum antibiotics, but our emergency department did a great job trying to stabilize the patient. And he did present in septic shock. Um, the focus of this poster exactly is making sure that as physicians, we, a lot of times we want to hone in on the, the past medical history, get that history from the patient. But in these cases where the patient comes in attended, we honestly don't know anything about them. Uh, we really focus on the other aspects, our, our clinical skills, our judgment, our ability to determine the labs, look them over, see exactly what's going on. Unfortunately, it was a really complicated case on presentation. Um, it turns out it was just another case of bacteremia that we just couldn't get in front of. Um, and that's why I want to make sure that we point out as, as physicians moving forward that, you know, we rely on our training and we try to stabilize the patient and do well by them. Any questions? How long was, the, was this time course? So from the time that he got, I guess, stung by the catfish, it was two days prior to presentation. 
Um, he came into the emergency department in the late evening. I probably saw him close to midnight, and that was after his first arrest. And he shortly passed after, I think, within 20 minutes of arriving to the ICU. So it was pretty quickly acting. So um, his presentation was septic shock, I'm assuming, was his demise. I don't remember the sensitivities off the top of my head, but I do believe that the, I'm, I'm pretty sure we saw him on Vanxosin, and that was able to cover exactly what was growing out of it. Are there other reports? Of yeah, so the, the thing about this bacteria that a lot of times it's usually found in the GI tract. Um, I'm assuming from a consuming of the, the wildlife and, the, and the, these environments, um, very few studies have shown it shown as an abscess, but again, it's a lot to the GI tract, abscess in the GI tract. So this was intramuscular, which was kind of a, a spotlight. I would like to bring this up as a topic. It's a possibility that there's not that many cases out there. Absolutely. So on the literature review, like you mentioned, um, a lot of times this was more nausea, vomiting, upset stomach kind of presentation. Um, something that we wouldn't be too surprised, like you would see in the Vibrio kind of instant um, ingestion. Um, but I think what really complicated the case is that he did have such of an unknown past medical history. I'm pretty sure alcohol, he was um, positive from cocaine as well. Um, you know, I believe there was opioids involved. Um, there was a lot of things presenting that could have easily been suggested of something, another mechanism behind the scenes. Um, and I think that's why it's important to like, we narrow down, try to work systematically as this patient comes in to try to isolate exactly what's going on. Um, but I do agree that there's a lot of things that could have happened to this patient. And on paper, he was sick. And unfortunately, he, he met his demise. Thank you, guys. Oh. It was purely isolated, that bacteria alone. I was wondering if there's another underlying, you know, E. coli or something more um, an anaerobe that was more like that would make sense for his presentation. But it was very isolated to that, the E. tarda. And the abscess was never drained. Abscess was not drained in the emergency department. It was noted, it was recorded. Yeah. Um, and I guess to the extreme swelling, they were more worried about some kind of compartment syndrome that they were only able to actually get pulses from ultrasound Doppler. So, but the, it was not lanced. And the abscess was not drained. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'll, I'll return to this soon. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.